Now joining us in the studio to discuss some of the issues raised in the report is the Director, Disaster Risk Reduction, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Dr. Daniel Obot. Thank you for joining us, Doctor. Sorry I called you Oboti the first time around. Thank you for having me here for this uh, discourse. Now, Doctor, what are the key components of flood risk management and reduction in handling emergencies? Let's begin with that. What we do in disaster risk management is that we have what we call hazard profiling, hazard mapping, hazard assessments, and when these are done, they relate to locations. And these hazards are potential threats that will culminate into disasters when they are being triggered by certain conditions. Then concerning flood in Nigeria, the disaster reduction measures and strategies lie on downscaling of early warning messages as received from NIMET. First of all, NIMET is Nigeria Meteorological Agency that will give information focus on the pattern of rainfall in our country. Certain locations will be predicted to have high amount of rainfall. Others will be predicted to have low amount of rainfall. From these forecasts by NIMET, Nigeria Hydraulic Services Agency, the Federal Government of Nigeria statutory institution, saddled with the responsibility of giving annual flood outlook, will further using the seasonal rainfall pattern earlier forecasted by NIMET to give outlook on the flood situation in our country. There are certain areas that will be predicted or listed in the flood outlook by NISTA that some of these areas, all government areas of states, will experience serious flood so and the the, now that you've mentioned that with this prediction, you work together with these other bodies to predict. Now, how does urbanization and deforestation contribute to increased flood risk? Do they play a factor? Yes, yes. Ah. In respect of urbanization, which is a major issue in flood uh, pattern in Nigeria, building without complying with building codes, town planning laws, and when people have moved from their local uh, communities to urban areas with high population, settlements will be raised on areas that should not. There will be non-compliance with town planning laws, building codes will not be taken into consideration. With this encroachment on natural water flow path, these paths will be blocked and prevent free flow of water. The urbanization is a major issue. Then when we are talking about deforestation, the natural vegetation cover is being removed by cutting of trees for firewood, and building activities by cutting of trees for farming, by cutting of trees for other economic activities, leaving the soil bare to be exposed to rainfall. And this will give the rainfall strength to wash away the surface of the soil. There will be no activities, no vegetation to protect the amount of rainfall that will be received on the earth's surface. Then right, the Doctor, 
So, so what will be, uh, how does your agency incorporate preparedness, mitigation and response strategies to, in your early warning systems for it to be effectively implemented in these flood prone areas? In, uh, preparedness, what we do is that for instance this particular year 2024, we carried out what we call downscaling of early warning alerts. Because disaster management is not limited to the national headquarters, we take it to the states, we take it to the local government areas. In that preparedness, we inform the state, we educate the communities what should be the strategies, the measures, the actions that should be undertaken to avert the flood situations and to reduce the adverse impacts of flooding to economic activities, to communities, to life pattern, to health. We realize that this particular year, there is ongoing cholera outbreak. And this cannot be differentiated or cut off from the impact of flooding because some drainages were blocked Waters could not flow, and it, it, made, it, it, it was a, a ground for maybe in areas that we have uh, broken pipes. These kind of situations affect, pollute drinking waters. And in some of these places, the flood water that has been going with the sediments flow into flow streams, streams that, are, that are being used by the, their cooking and domestic uses. All right, Doctor. So it's very important for people to be aware of these issues and, of course, comply with some of the things that uh, some of the awareness protocols that NEMA has been giving out periodically. I want to thank you very much for joining us and sharing, giving insight into this issue. I've been speaking with Dr. Daniel Obot, of the Director of Disaster Risk Management at NEMA. Thank you, Doctor. For having me here. Thank you very much.